In this episode of the online classroom, we're going to look at human factors and specifically how anthropometrics or human measurements can be applied to design. In a car, one of the things that affects user comfort is the amount of legroom and headroom that they might have, and that's what we're going to investigate in this episode. So the LEAF reports that in the front seat, there's 104.5 centimeters headroom and 107 centimeters legroom. And in the back seat, you have 94.7 centimeters as headroom and 84.5 centimeters as legroom. This means that there's a little bit less headroom, but a lot less legroom in the back. This is not too surprising as a typical car might have adults in the front seat and children in the back seat. So one of the first things that we can do is go to anthropometric factors related to height. And this might help us understand what size person can fit inside the leaf. So the coefficients of interest in the headroom are 0.52 times the height and in the legroom 0.53 times the height. These factors should help us understand whether or not we're going to fit inside the leaf. The next step is figuring out how the manufacturer applied these measurements. Is it the measurement as indicated by the red tier? So I took a tape measure to a car and found that approximately 100 centimetres was the distance indicated in the front and 60 centimetres was the distance indicated in the back. This was a station wagon so it was much larger than a leaf and if we look at the legroom in the back reported as 84.5 centimetres it might suggest that the manufacturer was measuring the legroom a bit more like indicated here. So, with that information, would somebody who's 1.8 metres tall fit inside the leaf? So using the coefficients that we had, I've applied that to find out how much space somebody who is 1.8 metres tall will require. In the front seat, it seems there is sufficient headroom for somebody who is 1.8 metres tall in both the front and the back, although in the back seat it would, it's very close, so it might not be comfortable for the user. In the front seat, you're fine, but in the back seat, when it comes to legroom, at 1.8 metres tall, you do not have enough space in the back seat and it becomes very cramped. A question you might then ask is how tall could somebody be to fit the manufacturer's measurements? A question you then might ask is how tall would somebody in the back seat need to be to fit to the manufacturer's measurements? Applying the manufacturer's measurements to all of the heights, we find that when it comes to the front seat, you can be about 2 metres tall, but when it comes to the back seat, your legroom restricts you to somebody who is about 1 metre 60 tall. Given that there's so much legroom in the front and so little legroom in the back, my next investigation is to find out whether or not if you moved the seat forward in the front, you could have somebody who is 1.8 metres tall in the back. In these alternative measurements, so this set of diagrams indicates that 0.351 times the height is an approximate space you need for your legroom. If we apply that to just the legroom in our original example, we want to move the seat, say, to 100 centimetres, which is generous room for somebody who is 1.8 metres tall. In the back seat, that increases the thigh length you can have. And so with 62.9 centimetres left, somebody could be 1.79 metres tall and fit in the back seat. So making sure that our seats are adjustable will make sure that somebody who is 1.8 metres tall could fit in both the back and the front. There are, of course, a couple of further considerations. You should double check the assumptions with the in-car measurements by actually measuring inside the car. Get somebody who's 1.8 metres tall and get them to sit inside the car. The next step is figuring out whether or not the average population size is going to fit inside the car. But we'll leave that for another episode of the online classroom. Remember that one of the key ideas with anthropometrics is to use some of the data that already exists to inform decisions that you've made about your design. And with that, we'll leave the online classroom for anthropometrics.